So there's a recurring theme in uh, uh, the Burgers book. Um, she does every chapter she'll talk about the biosocial, <clears throat> the cognitive, and then the psychosocial development. So we kind of cover each chapter, each age range, those three dimensions. And this one's on cognitive development, which is about thinking. <clears throat> um, PSA is probably the uh, uh, go-to person to talk about child development in terms of cognition. His stage, there's four stages. This one's called the sensory motor stage. We'll talk about the pre-operational motor stage in the next in the next age group. Uh, it's his term for the way that infants think by using their senses and motor skills during this first period of development. Infants are active learners. They adapt. Adaptation is core to their intelligence, and cognition develops in four distinct periods. Um, <clears throat> through the process of assimilation and accommodation. So assimilation is the type of adaptation in which new experiences are interpreted to fit into or assimilate with old ideas. And accommodation is the type of adaptation in which old ideas are restructured to include or accommodate new experiences. So I kind of think about it as an upward spiral. The never-ending process. Uh, they include primary circular reaction where um, the baby produces an action which causes a reaction. The secondary circular reaction is the baby's action uh, produces a, a, the same action uh, and a continued interest in doing the same thing like shaking the rattle in this picture. And a tertiary circular reaction is the baby action re leads to a novel reaction. <clears throat> so they switch from the same thing they've been doing to new activities. Stage one and two are primary circular reaction, infant's response to his or her own body. We just mentioned those circular and primary reactions. And of course, infants adapt reflexes through information from repeated responses. So for instance, sucking. Uh, they'll eventually find their hand, start sucking on it, and then it becomes a repeated a primary action. Stage three and four, se secondary circular reactions, infant's responses to objects are different. Um, the interaction between baby and something else, like the mirror neurons, begins to start taking over. Mirror neurons help you repeat motor activities. So stage three, between four and eight months, they attempt to make interesting things last longer, like shaking a rattle. Uh, between uh, stage four is between six and 12 months. There are new adaptations and anticipation. They're almost like uh, finding a means to an end. Uh, their behavior becomes more goal-directed, purposeful action that benefits from new motor skills resulting from brain maturation. Uh, you'll, one of the things that you'll find is that the limitation in cognitive, cognition in children is basically the limitation of their brain development. So it's a good way of assessing intellectual and cognitive abilities by looking at what they can and what they can't do, which is what Piaget did. Uh, there's things, something called object permanence that happens during, or starts to happen during sensory motor stage. Realization that objects or people continue to exist even when you don't see them. Uh, an example of doing that is peekaboo. At some point, this child's not going to fall for peekaboo anymore, uh, even though they might look surprised. Stage five and six, tertiary circular reactions. Um, first with action, then with ideas. So this tertiary circular involves active exploration and experimentation, exploration of a range of new activities and variations in response to new ways of learning. Stage five happens between 12 and 18 months, uh, new means through active exploration, the little scientist. And stage six, between 18 and 24 months, mental combinations, including intellectual experimentation with imagination. Remember, this is also when children are starting to talk. So they can explore and tell you what's going on uh, internally. <clears throat> um, so in stage five, there's a little scientist. Um, they experiment without anticipating results using trial and error most of the time and active or creative exploration. Uh, stage six, uh, no more play pens. Little scientists still experiment in order to see that this 14 month old use a digital tablet uh, and my protest was taken away from pieces of exploring. Piaget was reevaluated. Many uh, infants reached stage in sensory motor intelligence earlier than Piaget predicted. 
he used a very small sample, his own children. These are very simple techniques. Um, and the real limitation was in the 1940s, they didn't know what was going on uh, in the brain. Now they do. So some techniques by neuroscientists help actually see what's happening in an infant's brain during these different stages of <coughs> sensory motor development. Uh, so there are some issues, both practical and ethical, uh, because the technology is not expensive. And what does it mean to put brain activity or monitor brain activity on one child? You don't really understand what the norms of that are. One of the models that's been applied to understanding cognition is called information processing model. Sounds like a computer. It involves an incremental uh, detail and step-by-step -step description of mechanisms of thought, uh, sort of like flow charts. It adds insight to understanding cognition at every age. So uh, cognitive neuroscientists are busy at work doing this information processing type of research. Gibson and Gibson uh, coined the term affordances. <clears throat> Their perceptions require selectivity. Affordances provide opportunities for perception and interaction that is offered by a person, place, or object in the environment. So affordances are things that allow you, your, you and your brain to develop more quickly. Um, <clears throat> selection of which affordance is perceived and acted upon is related to four factors. Uh, their sensory awareness, what senses are working and what aren't. Immediate motivation, are they in interested in whatever the sensation is. Uh, their current level of development, and have they had past experiences. So selective perception of affordance is also uh, characteristic of every age and every culture. And of course, Western cultures might have different affordances than uh, more Eastern cultures might. Uh, one experiment that Gibson did back in the 1960s was the visual cliff experimental apparatus that gives the illusion of a sudden drop off, even though there's not. Um, infants' performance, performance depends on past experience, including social context. So if the mother was on the other side of that big open space, uh, the infant might or may or may not crawl out on the, on the cliff. <clears throat> Movement in people are very important. All babies are attracted to two kinds of affordances. Things that move, they like, like mobiles, um, gives them a dynamic perception, focus on movement and change, and especially people. Uh, they prefer people. It's kind of a universal principle and may be tied to evolutionary forces. This information processing model also includes a memory, which is fragile and can be activated with reminders, repetition, and retrieval cues. According to classic developmental theory, infants store no memories their first year, which may or may not be true. Developmental now agree that very young infants can remember if it followed amidst the following conditions. Experimental conditions are similar to real life, so it's not contrived. Their motivation is high, and special measures aid uh, memory retrieval. Um, so in this demonstration, Rovi and Collier experiment. A young infant immediately remembers how to make a familiar mobile move because it's interesting to them. Unfamiliar mobiles do not provoke the same reaction. <clears throat> he kicks his right leg and flails his arms, just as he learned to do it several weeks ago when he's given the same mobile. So they do remember things. Uh, reminders, repetition, and age are super important. Reminder sessions provide time for the infant to retrieve stored information. Uh, repeated reminders are more powerful than single ones, and contact is crucial, especially for infants younger than nine months. Infants can process information and store uh, conclusions. They can remember specific events and patterns with limits. Early researchers underestimated infant memory and failure to differentiate between implicit and explicit memory. Implicit is when you're not trying to remember something and explicit is when you are. <clears throat> uh, language, what develops in the first two years? Well, before birth, language learning happens or doesn't happen because brain organization uh, um, are still pretty immature. Newborns preference for speech, sounds, and mother's language um, emerges gradually. Selective listening occurs. And around six months, the ability to distinguish sounds and gestures 
uh, in their own language. So they make babbling and do other things that are interesting to them. The development of spoken language uh, is pretty much laid out here. Some high milestones include by about a year, they're able to recognize native language. Uh, their vocabulary grows between the, uh, a year and uh, 18 months. By two years, they use multi-word sentences. Um, so you can read through that. It's pretty really interesting. Uh, it all starts with babbling. <coughs> involves repetition of certain syllables, such as ba ba ba, uh, that begin when babies between uh, six and nine, nine months old is experience expectant. So uh, it should happen, uh, and it will happen. But it's it's actually uh, promoted by babbling back at them. Begin to sound like a native language around 12 months. Uh, language also includes gesturing. All infants gesture with their hands and other parts of their face. Uh, concepts with gesture are expressed sooner than speech because they've been doing it longer. Pointing emerges in human babies around 12 months or 10 months. First words are, are gradual beginnings at about a year. They speak a few words, six to 15 months, they understand 10 times more words than they can produce. By 12 months, they begin using whole phrases. Uh, recognizing vocalizations from universal to language specific. There's a naming explosion. One spoken vocabulary increases about 50 words. It builds quickly at a rate of 50 to 100 words per month. By 21 months, uh, a 21 month old can say as many words as an 18 month old. Twice a minute. It explodes in three months time. Cultural differences emerge. Culture and family variations exist in child-directed speech. Infants seek best available language from teachers. Uh, and of course, music, tempo, help. Uh, there's also issues about bilingual uh, education, whether that's helpful or harmful. Uh, cultural differences in language use, the use of different parts of speech. And of course, grammar differences can be different between one culture and another. So if you speak Spanish and English, you understand the difference in grammar and parts of speech, how they're emphasized. Mastering two languages can be tricky. Quantity of speech in both languages the child uses is crucial. Children implicitly track the number of words and phrases and learn those expressed most often. Bilingual to toddlers realize differences between languages, adjusting tone, pr pronunciation, cadence, and vocabulary when speaking in a monolingual per than a monolingual person does. But again, this can be kind of confusing for them. One theory uh, about language acquisition is B.F. Skinner's. <clears throat> he noticed that uh, spontaneous babbling is usually reinforced. The parents who are experts, teachers, other caregivers help them by reinforcing them. Written repetitions of words is instructive, especially when the words are linked to pleasure or daily activities. Well-taught infants become well-spoken children. If infants want, adults want children to speak, understand and, uh, and later read well, they must talk to their infants. Another theory, the social impulse fosters infant language. Infants communicate because humans have evolved as social beings, that we are social. The emotional messages of speech, not the words, are of the focus of early communication. Each culture and practice that furthers social interaction includes talking and social content of social of speech is universal, which is why babies learn um, whatever specifics or cultures provide. Uh, you can tell from not only what the message is, but how important it is by the emotional emphasis on it. Maternal response to uh, infant's language is interesting. Infants are highly responsive. Top 10% mothers, uh, their vocabulary explodes and explodes early. Infants in less responsive bottom, 10% uh, mothers, it lags and is nearly half of what it is uh, by 21 months. So the moral to the story is mothers and fathers need to read to their children and talk to them. <coughs> Polish babies learning sign language on the top uh, and New Yorkers uh, interpreting a smile on the bottom are all doing what babies do. They try to understand communication long before they're able to talk. They read your face. They've been doing it for almost two years. 
A third one is that infants teach themselves. Language learning is innate. Adults need to, not to teach it, nor is it a byproduct of social interaction. Language itself is experience expectant, although obviously the specific language is experience dependent. So uh, language will emerge regardless, but if you want it to uh, blossom, you have to stimulate it. So that's the difference between experience expectant and experience dependent. And Noam Chomsky, of course, a real famous MIT uh, psycholinguist, uh, indicates that language is too complex to be mastered through a step-by-step -step conditioning, like Skinner. Language acquisition, or LADs, are innate. They're born into the brain, specifically Broca's and Wernicke's area of the brain. And all babies are eager to learn. Uh, and language may be considered one of the more, one, just one more aspect of neurological maturation. So babies won't speak until their brain is developed enough to do that. Which is the right perspective or the correct one? Well, actually, probably all of them are. Uh, some hybrid theory that, it, that uses the best um, aspects of each theory uh, can be used uh, interchangeably. Multiple attentional, social, and linguistic cues contribute to early language. Different elements of language apparatus may have evolved in different ways. So depending on the context where you live geographically and your culture may have big impact on how early and how often you speak. And that's the end of this chapter.